The cable areas have been so filled with live coverage of Trump's speeches that this week he jokingly complained he has to keep writing new ones. And then he went after the pundits. So, George Will is a disaster. The guy's a disaster. Honestly, another one, Carl Rove. No, he's terrible. He's terrible. He's terrible. He still thinks that Mitt Romney won. The press, you said last night in Dallas, that generally speaking, unfair to you. You really believe that, or was that just hyperbole? No, no, I think generally speaking, unfair. I met some political reporters who are absolute horrible human beings and they're liars. I've also dealt with some that are extremely honorable, extremely talented, and really good. Well, here's a non-horrible human being. I sat down with National Journal columnist Ron Fournier here in Studio One. Ron Fournier, welcome. Thanks for having me. There's a lot of chat of the media made Donald Trump because his press conferences and his speeches are often carried live on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and they get ratings. Is it more complicated than that? It's much more complicated. First of all, the establishment made Donald Trump. The establishment in the Republican Party, the establishment even in the Democratic Party, and certainly the media establishment. We have all let down voters. Voters are really upset with the political and media elite and they've created this, there's this huge vacuum for somebody to step in and uh, satiate people's hunger and that's what Trump has done. So it kind of starts with a letdown on our part but then it gets much more complicated after that. Well I wonder to what some extent it reflects, and a lot of people miss this, Trump's for lack of a better phrase, media mastery, because he knows how to drive a news yep. cycle. He knows how to be interesting and entertaining and bombastic and insulting enough right. that when he does give a speech or hold a press conference, uh, it's not the typical, you know, um, carefully calculated politician speak, and that does get ratings. Right. I think there's that's hitting on one point I wanted to make that there's there's some symmetry, some uh, commonality in the needs of the voters and the media. The media and voters love clarity. Okay, and he gives both of us that. We also love celebrity. We love covering celebrities, and our culture now has been celebritized, and Trump is feeding it into, right into that. And we in journalism, of course, we love things that are new. It's the beginning of you know, the first three letters in the word news. New, different, new, different, unorthodox. Exactly, and boy, do voters want something new, to my earlier point. Um, in addition to that, the, the media, our biggest bias isn't that we're necessarily liberal or Republican, or although there, there is a, a political bias, but the biggest bias, as you know, are ratings, Mm -hmm. Conflict and clicks. Us old writers, we like to get our clicks. You guys got to have your ratings, and we all have a bias towards conflict. Well, Donald Trump is giving us all of those things. He's and giving he, us the celebrity. He's giving us the right. news. And this is no accident. He knows how to do this. Better and yes, anybody in, in American uh, and yes, politics would right say now. that we fall for that. But let's look at some numbers. Uh, Wall Street Journal cited a study uh, for the basically the three months that Trump has been running for president. And CNN out there with. 2,159 reports on Donald Trump compared to half of that, 1,087 on Jeb Bush. Fox News about a third more on Trump than Bush. MSNBC just slightly more on Trump than Bush. And so my question is, however much we might justify it, have we reached a point where this is fundamentally unfair to the other candidates? You know, I don't know. Again, it's, it's complicated. Look, those numbers are out of whack, but he is the front runner. And we are being used. And if Scott but, Walker was the front runner, we, we'd be spending this much attention on him. Oh, come on. And, and it's a double edged sword. Every oh. press conference would be carried live, and every speech oh, yeah. uh, oh, would yeah. be carried live. Oh, yeah. Now, maybe, no. not, not, maybe not to the same degree that Trump is because of the things I talked about, but then when the front runner gets in, the, you know, gets in front of the target, they get more, more publicity. And it can go both ways. And it may be about to go both ways on Trump when you get this kind of attention. Don't forget, you know, in addition to all the cynical things I mentioned about the media, what we want, our number one fundamental mission is supposed to be to hold these folks accountable. Well, Donald Trump could be president of the United States. And us pulling our punches and stepping back and saying, hey, we're going to ignore him because he's a clown, isn't what we should be doing. We need to really be pushing him. Also, Trump is constantly doing interviews with everybody from Chuck Todd to Bill O'Reilly to Howard Stern. He calls into shows uh, that don't put him on camera. He generates news. Jeb Bush was doing almost no TV news right. for a while. And he talks to newspaper reporters and he gets in all the stories, even when the stories are not primarily about him. You know, maybe that's something that a candidate like Hillary Clinton could learn from. You know, maybe uh, access, although it can hurt you, yes, it also, you but, can, it, but it can you. also help you, especially in a time, again, let's talk about how this is a culture phenomenon too. This is the age of transparency. This is the age when everyone, all of our leaders, all of our celebrities, anybody who we want to be is in our living room, is on our palm pilot. Well, why? Donald Trump figures that out. Donald Trump realizes they want to have access to me, I'm going to give to him. Yeah, he's not hiding behind any curtain. But now, 
There's been constant coverage of Trump for failing to correct a New Hampshire town hall questioner who called President Obama Muslim and not American. Is the press pumping this up because, let's face it, a lot of the pundits, establishment media, does not like Donald Trump? That might be part of the reason, but isn't the main reason the fact that it's wrong? that the president is not a Muslim and the president is a Christian. When a, when a candidate, especially somebody who's a front runner of a major party, is saying things that are wrong and they're, and, and they're, they're feeding ignorance and not feeding the truth, it's right. our job to right. jump but, on but it. But the, the balance here is that Trump didn't say this. He failed to correct a citizen who said this. And it was quite a moment, and I was surprised he didn't. But it's not... Why are you surprised he didn't? Because it seemed, the moment seemed right for him to... There you go. Right. And the fact that he didn't say it tells you something about him. And look, I think, this, let's not forget, but the story of our times here, Howard, is the public's anger with, with politics. And whether Donald Trump lasts two weeks or two terms, that anger is not going to go away unless somebody comes in and satiates it. And we need to cover that. You put your finger on something. Ron Fournier, Thank thanks you, very much for joining us. Appreciate you having me, man.